welcome to Spread, Spread the, the word. word. It is November, the month of Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't no, 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 Decorative gourd season, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Julia is gonna start. Okay, so this is a very fun um, fantasy book. I'm guessing that on these men on the cover, I think this is Edwin and this is Robin. Okay. Um, based on what you know about them. Based on what I know about them. Yes. Like his little collar. Oh, he's, his collar's popped. He's, yeah, popped. he's, he's uh, very fashion. And then this one's real buttoned up. So this takes place in England in like the Edwardian era. era. So in this England, there is sort of like a shadow side of, of the country that is like magicians exist. Um, some people have magic. There's like a uh, like well-known family, and then sometimes it'll crop up in, in like a random person. So it starts off that Robin, one of the main characters, he gets accidentally on purpose assigned to the this like liaison office in the home office by this man who dislikes him. And... He gets there, and it turns out it's this, like, liaison for, like, magical people that, like, reports to the prime minister. And so he has an unbushling where he learns about magic. So the other person, persons in the office are Edwin, this one, and um, Mrs. Morsey, Adelaide Morsey, who is um, a Punjab uh, British lady who's very um, task-oriented and organized. And, which is actually, like, I feel like I liked her character maybe the best, um, because they leave her at the office, like, deal with work life for, like, a whole week. And she, and, like, don't even, they're, like, zero concern for what's going on in the office, and Ada Lay's just there, like, yeah, I got this shit. And she's, like, doing all this <laughs> stuff, and, like, doing all the reports and things. Uh, Robin was assigned to the office because, uh, there was a it wasn't like a position came open, the person went missing, the guy who was there before, Reggie. And no one knows where he was, um, but shortly into Robin being the job, he gets accosted by some magicians wearing bog masks, and they rough him up and then leave a curse on his arm. Um, they, they're asking him questions about like, where this object is, because they think he knows. So obviously there's these things going on from that Reggie has left um, undisclosed. So Edwin, it, he takes Robin. They also, when they first meet, it's a bit of like a... They don't like each other. Okay. <laughs> They're very different. Clash. Yeah. Bit of a clash, but you know where it's going. Yeah. So good. <laughs> <Sexual tension. laughs> yeah. From the start. <laughs> um, so he, Edwin is like, okay, we have to get this car curse off Robin. Um, and he like tries a few things for, at first, but he's like, okay, I've got to take you back to my family's estate, which is like in the country, because we have like a really huge library and I need to like consult the books because he's like very into like. Um, research and figuring out spells. He doesn't have a lot of magic because um, I guess every magician has a different like well to pull from. Um, some of them are much stronger than others and he got like a very little bit but he is um, really knowledgeable and like really precise with his magic because he has so little. So they go to the family estate. Again, they're there for like a week leaving <laughs> Mrs. Morrissey, Miss Morrissey to deal with the so office. So capable. So capable. Oh my gosh. Uh, they get there. They meet Edwin's family who are the worst. It's really that thing where, like, you're stuck in this role, and, you know, I feel like we've talked about this before, when you're stuck in a role with your family, and it's hard to, like, break mm -hmm. out of it, yes. but his is, like, his is, like, pretty bad. They're, yeah. like, you're, you're nothing, you have no magic, basically, and they're, like, you just, like, like, hanging out in the library. Oh. Which I feel like we can all relate to being the one, like, with the books. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is, like, yeah. what he is. Uh, the magic, the way it works in this universe is like they make these cradles with strings so yeah they and use an actual sure. string to do it but as you learn the a little bit into it, we don't get into it much in this one but i assume it's going to come in more there's maybe other ways to practice magic but this is the accepted way that's done by all the men and also it is the, still that time so of the world so there's still like sexism at play and it comes in in really interesting ways because like just like passing comments, some of the like male magicians were like, no, like women don't learn magic. They are mm -hmm. magical. There's like women who are magicians, but they aren't formally taught, much like women at the time weren't mm -hmm. necessarily always sent to school. 
Edwin's sister's husband, Charlie, is like, he seems like one of those, like, kind of, like, tally-ho, men, like, he's, like, kind of genial, but he's also like, oh, but the women folk won't learn magic, they don't know, it's not, it's not good for their brains, sort of thing. Bastards. Yeah. Yeah, so there's that, like, is an element of it, but the main story is between Edwin and Robin, and then figuring out how to get the curse off Robin, because it's not the curse thing on his arm, it's, like, these, like, letters, and they're runes, and they're, like, continuing, like, every day, they kind of grow up further and further, Mm -hmm. and he has these, like, really intense pain spells that come from them, and they also appear to have given him foresight, so he sees these, he's seeing images, but he's not sure how to piece them together, but they seem to be from the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, so all that's going on, and then also a slow and steamy romance is building, and it's so good, and there's no fading to black in this one. It is. Yes. It is full frontal and in your face. Yes. <laughs> it is good, actually, and it's really well written. Um, the the romance between them is very nice, both on the feelings aspect and also on the actual sex. Mm-hmm. Um, because contracts are really big in magicians' life, um, consent is a really big topic that comes up. So that is kind of fun that it's like woven into like the magical contracts and also the uh, the sex scenes. They, like, sort of do it in, like, a poking fun kind of way, but also, like, Edwin is, like, really serious about oh. consent. Oh. <laughs> I know. Edwin seems very serious, just generally. Yeah. Very serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it is so fun. Um, and the love story between Edwin and Robin is, like, really geared up to be, like, this epic, like, love story. Oh, it's good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> There's a lot of really fun, playful lines. Um especially in the sex scenes. (laughs) A lot of man sex, let me tell you. I got some ideas. (laughs) Yeah. That was good. Okay, so, I read Blue Skinned Gods by um, S.J. Sindhu. So, it is about this uh, boy named Kalki, and he is, you are told, the 10th avatar of um, the, the Hindu god Vishnu. Um, the tenth and final, so the tenth reincarnation of this of this. There's only supposed to be ten. Yeah, I guess so. Does the world end after that? Yeah, so it like oh, sets Jesus. the apocalypse in motion or something, which they don't really touch on all that that part a lot. Okay. <laughs> weirdly, um, but he lives in an ashram in India with his father, his Aya, and his mother, his Ama, and his cousin Lakshman and his aunt and uncle. But they all live in this ash- ashram. And he takes in pilgrims and uh, gives them, like, uh, heals them and also uh, blesses them, basically. That's how they make their money, is from these pilgrims coming to see him because he's known throughout the land um, because he's got blue skin. Left that out. That's a very important part. Ah, He actually has blue skin. skin. That's why they think he's the 10th incarnation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's 10 years old. And there is a prophecy in this book that his his father owns and that Kalki has read um, numerous times that said that, that he must pass three different trials. And once he passes those trials, um, he will have reached, like, full godhood. And he's ten, so he believes all of this. Yes, he believes all of this. Has he had insufferable child because he's been told he's a god his entire life? You know, he has his moments, <laughs> but he actually is not as bad as you would think he would be right. for being grown up in that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he definitely, because you know, like, you will assume he lives with Lakshman, who is about the same age as he is. And there's definitely going to be small, like, big tree, small tree issues there. Yeah. You know, where Lakshman just always feels like he's overshadowed. And, um, he's not, he yeah, right. he's not seen, you yeah. know. So, he has these three trials, and, um, this girl Rupa is brought to the ashram, and her parents are like, please heal her. And then he's, like, trying to heal her, and it doesn't work right away. Um. Does it, wait, had it always worked like that? So, a lot of the things... It's hard to talk about this. I mean, it's pretty... Okay, first of all, it's pretty obvious when you start the book that it's not real that magic That there's something going anything. on happening. Like, there's something happening leaders. here. Yeah. Okay. And that his dad is the orchestrator. It seems like the other adults um, are hesi- getting more and more hesitant about it. Mm. Um, so, Rupa comes. He, he doesn't heal her right away. But then, within a week, she's healed. And coincidentally, his dad used to be a doctor. Coincidentally. Yes. There are little things that are happening where you're just like, this is not quite right. You read this book and it is really like, you're, it, it unfolds very slowly, but 
you discover so many things and so many little hints and like things that his 10 year old brain don't latch on to his father is really oppressive and his mother is really sweet um and is kind of like um his sanctuary within that um and his his father is really awful to his mother but i what i really liked about it was kalki is like a very um for being raised the way he was he has a very open malleable mind which is part of the issue but it yeah. also makes him really open to like everybody like sexual experiences he's mm -hmm. like i would call him pansexual mm -hmm. um and he might not know the word for that you know being um raised how he is yeah but he just seems he sees beauty in everybody yeah and um i loved that about him mm -hmm. very much it's just like so eye-opening and fun to kind of explore like gender with him yeah and sexuality and all of that stuff crossed with faith there's also like uh a lot of tension between people who worship vishnu versus shiva within hinduism um another thing with this is caste oh mm -hmm. yeah is a huge thing what time does it take place during now okay present day yeah so he's in the brahmin caste which is like high top yeah, yeah obviously you know because he is a god and you know that comes like you can't cross marry or cross like even like talk or have be friends with any p people from other, other castes. castes yeah and that comes into it um later on um he has the chance to kind of talk to um some american people whose family were indian and who were in a lower caste and mm. she was like how fucked up is a religion that is based in a caste system like this and he was like i like to i like to have thought that i didn't have those prejudices like prejudices in me but he was like she like there was a point where she touched him and he almost flinched because it's like you're not even supposed to touch people no touch and it's like caste. ingrained in him and he mm -hmm. was like and he didn't but he almost no, did. did and he but he recognizes it and that's yeah. what's so great about him mm -hmm. is that he sees that in himself and, and corrects it yeah so yeah mm -hmm. i thought it was really good Hello. Okay, so I read The Grim Rose Girls by Laura Pohl. So it is set at a an elite boarding school in Switzerland in, at uh, the Grim Rose Academy. Anglaise <laughs> <laughs> French. It is uh, described as pretty, pretty Little Liars meets The Descendants, um, which I get why they would say it that way, but it's not quite. If you watched Pretty Little Liars, it does not have any of the camp of that okay. Okay. it's just that there are four friends who mm -hmm. are trying to get to the bottom of a murder okay. specifically one of their friends which is exact which is how pretty little liars opens mm -hmm. and the descendants play comes into it because there are each of the girls as they discover have a connection to a fairy tale mm -hmm. specifically a curse mm -hmm. the book opens um with their friend arianne Arian, yes, who has bright, ri bright red dyed hair, big green eyes. Oh, um, yep, uh, and Way she has. Who that is. <laughs> she has drowned. Oh my oh god, my she god. drowned! Which oh. person? <laughs> Arian has died, and her friends are beside themselves. Naturally, um, their fr her friends are L, Eleanor Ashworth. Guess who that is? She Hello. has yeah, and Ash Ashworth like the sister, oh, the sisters yeah. out of us, and she has a stepmother and two stepsisters who are they're the worst. Um, and she like she has pretty severe OCD, um, and is very much a helper. Her her stepmother isn't like abusive, um, outwardly. Her stepmother, for instance, finds reading to be an idle activity. Pretty early on in the book, they find a um, a, a book <laughs> in um, Arianne's dresser that is a book of old fairy tales, and she wants they it has Arianne scribbles all throughout it. So she wants to figure out you know what it means and what Arianne was doing with it. Um, but she says, "Oh no, one of you one of you other girls has to take it um, because you know I can't." I, I can't be seen with that at home. It'll just be taken away because my because my stepmother thinks it's you know frivolous or whatever. So that's so that's L. 
you start the book with her and I, I think you, it's pretty equally distributed whose point of view you get. Um, but then you also have Rory, Aurora, it's not Aurora, oh. Aurora. Just Aurora. With an E on it instead oh. of an A. She's also, I think, the funniest character. She's, she's, she's very, yes, she, she's very funny. Mm. She's very gay and very funny and very funny about being gay and rich. <laughs> I really <laughs> like her. So that's, yes, that's Rory. Um, is, is the name she goes by. And then Yuki, um, which in Japanese means snow flower. She is objectively the most beautiful girl in the school. Snow Everybody white. comments about it all the time. Yep. Mm. She has a stepmother. Fairest of them all. Mm -hmm. She's the fairest one. <laughs> so there's Eleanor, Yuki, Rory, um, Ariane, and then Nani is the new girl. She is from Hawaii, um, and she arrives um, she arrives to school shortly after um, Ariane's death, and she is placed in Ariane's room in Ariane's old bed, of course. So now she's thrown into all of this. So she's the one who finds the book in the dresser because she's like putting her stuff in the dresser, and she gives it to the girls, and they start looking through it. Um, Elle and Rory are like they are certain that that um, Ariane's death was not an accident. The prevailing theory theory is that it was suicide. But, like she didn't leave a note like she and her boyfriend had just broken up but like it was like that was months ago she was like she was not suicidal um and everybody was like you know what it, that's what happened and these things happen move on they're determined they find the book it has all her scribbles in it and it has a list of names and it has their names on it and her name on it and then they find in little mermaid arian's name written next oh. to little mermaid so arian had figured out that she was little mermaid in he this situation didn't take that much yeah, this is kind of <laughs> obvious. Um, and then there's also, oh my god, sorry, I can't believe I forgot this. There's a note that falls out of the book that says, um, I'll tell you the truth, bring the book. But they're trying to figure out what it is and how it works. The source. And who, yeah, and who's behind mm -hmm. it. it. It's, I mean, it's mostly just a murder mystery. But there's, like, fantastical elements. There's a, there's a, a soothsayer character to her. Love it. Sounds good. It does sound fun. It's yeah. very good. I, I, yeah, I, I, I definitely recommend it. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, what do you call them? Oh, feet. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>